that there is my uh, normal wing. It's a 28 meter uh, Roadster 3. And uh, this is what I'm gonna be flying today. It's a 20 meter uh, V-King. And it is just a single layer. So it's literally like flying a bed sheet. Massive difference in the side. This one can fit my, in a backpack, a rucksack. Paul's got one as well. You know, dry out the grass and then go for a little fly, I think. It'll be good. So we've just been having a look what comes with the uh, V-King. It's a free windsock, a USB stick, and many other bits of kit. But the ultimate thing, as it's about to be modeled by Mr. Paul Goodwin. But that is the first hat I've ever seen with a, uh, with a built-in pocket. <laughs> maybe, it's, maybe it's for your keys. I Jeez. can't believe that, mate. Your wing is the size of your kit. Yeah. Yeah. It fit my helmet. It's tiny. I'm going to show you the risers in a minute because they are seriously thin, uh, creepily thin. But the first thing to note is I'm usually on a 28 metre uh, roadster and converting to the same uh, weight range in a V King puts me at a 20 metre. I mean, look at the size of this thing. The other thing me and Paul have just realised is that um, usually the stuff sack is a stuff sack because your cells are still full of air. But obviously this is a single skin, so packing it away later will be quite interesting because there's nothing to hold in air, so it should pack away really easily. But we'll see. All set up, we've started to dry out the ground. Um, we're going for a takeoff in a minute, should be nice. Let's see how it goes. Goodwin and I are about to uh, put all of our body weight through that tiny little hook in and these uh, risers which are effectively made of thong material. It's unbelievable. So we're in uh, almost near wind at the moment and it's kiting beautifully, it just comes straight up. So apparently when you're launching this um, there's no need to touch the A's, you literally just step forward and it, it comes straight up. Um, so we'll see how that goes. I might give it a little touch just as um, the ground's quite damp at the moment so it might need a little bit. We've got our walking talking wind indicator over there puffing on his vape machine. Puffing on his vape machine. Look at that straight towards me. Oh my god man. That, <laughs> that bloody riser. <laughs> I can't believe that. That feels, that feels so strange doesn't it Ben? Doesn't it? They're tiny. It's like it feels like a toy. Okay. So the brake, uh, the brake handle—you've probably already realised—but kind of slide out. They're on a. Uh... Oh, so they're on a magnet, and then when the magnet goes in, they, uh, they lock into place. Yeah, it goes through the first level, it locks, and then you can slide them out downwards. That's clever. All right, I'm gonna go for it now, mate. Oh, good. Like, so apparently you just get the fucking brakes in your hands. Okay, brake. And then just throw your risers over the back. So, yep. the, so literally like that, no A's. I'm just going to step forward, centre myself. Yeah. Yeah, I'm centred as well, Pop. Okay, right, off you go. I'm going to go, mate. It feels so strange not having A's in my hand. I know. Wow, straight up. And that comes up. Yeah, bit of an overshoot. That's it, oh. keep going, keep going. Yeah, you're good. Keep going, let's go, mate. That's it, you're off. Wow, okay, off I go. Yeah, then apply a little bit of brake pressure when you launch, mate. Yeah, I just checked the, checked the brakes. Other than that though, mate, it's uh, pretty sassy. Hey. I'm up. I'm on your left. Yeah, Tommy. And... Oh my god. Oh my word. Oh. It's so light on oh, the steering. Man. 
They can't place it all, can it? I, I, it's so light on the steering, mate. I can barely, uh... Wow. I see we had um, Oh, we've got an aircraft down there, dude. Yeah, I see him. I'm on your uh, left. Yeah, no, John, this I say we head down the, between the solar panels and into the valley, mate. It's a sexy beast, isn't it, the swing? So there's a helicopter over to our, to my nine o'clock. Hi, hello. Uh, yeah, higher, see, yeah, see him. Higher than us. So, by yeah, pulling out to the side then, I'm engaging my D's, which is uh, you, you're me across. Like so. And then by pulling in slightly, we're getting a nice bit of roll in those turns. Ah, Ben. Ah, uh, wow. we got a Oh, mate. This thing's gorgeous. Yeah, dude, I had a lot of twists on as well. I'll tell you what, mate, these brakes are so light. Okay, turning. Yeah, cool, I'm above you. Oh, mate, it's dynamic in the turns, isn't it? It's it's by yeah. no means um, sluggish at all. Mate, I'm really impressed by it. Mate, I'm, I'm having one. I love it. I you know what, say that. Take my money. So, yeah, it needed a little bit of a brake check on the way up. Because it does tend to, um, it does tend to shoot up. Either that, or you just slow down that launch a little bit. Good, but it's so nice in the sand compared to my normal wings, um, and it's so easy to launch. Um, excuse my launch that I did earlier. I was being a bit of a dick, but it came up so nice. It came so easy. And then it'll, I think you feel a little bit like, you know, things like you're washing all that a little bit more on this than a reflex. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I've been pulling my uh, my brakes in slightly as well to engage the tips, get a bit more dynamic. But if you're pulling, if you're pulling out, which uh, engages that D-riser on the pulley, the braking's yeah. very mellow actually. So you've got both. You, not you've got a nice mellow turn when you want it. In comparison to your wing though, I feel a bit like when I pull it out, um, engaging the brake hand, not the tip steering. Yeah. I feel like I hit a wall where I know where the brake is, if you know what I mean, rather than on a so star wing with long brake hand. You sort of slowly turn and slowly turn and slowly turn and speed them up. Yeah. I feel with this, I can pull it and know exactly where the correct pressure is. Yeah. These brake handles, you've got to be careful how you pick them up. Because if you go inside your brake line, you have a little twist in them. So you've always got to pick up from the outside. It's because yeah. that, that, that bit of brake line that comes down and engages the D, uh, that kind of sits uh, quite a length sometimes outside of that brake. So you've just got to be careful of that. I've done that a couple of times on this flight. Yeah, I've, I know it's something off me, yeah. It definitely doesn't um, um, affect it though. Like it's still flying nicely. Yeah, I've noticed that. Like, I'm just going to repeat that, mate. I tell you what, I can see the flare happening as well. So when you pull your brakes down to shoulder height, that is, that's engaging the kind of rear brakes on that line. And then beyond that, you're engaging the Ds. So it's a two part flare with the first part on the very back uh, portion of the wing, the leading, uh, the trailing edge. And then the second part of the uh, flare is actually pulling down on your D riser. And that's then your uh, second anchor into the wind to slow you down even more. Ah, uh, it's pretty cool, eh? Hello, mate. Westmore. <laughs> I can see you. Where's Paul? Or I can see Paul. Where's... Oh, yeah. Seeing yeah, someone right behind you. Yeah, he's quite behind me, I think. Mate, mm. I want one. He's also, he's also about a fucking mile away. Say again. I want one so much. <laughs> I've been trying to figure out what I'm going to sell to buy one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love the uh, the brake system, so you've got the D's, the D um, pulleys, for those nice uh, gentle well, turns right? like I'm doing cool. now. Yeah. And then as soon as you want to uh, to rip it into something a little bit yeah. more uh, dynamic, look at that. Straight round. Is that? Okay. Look at that. How far down was your hand? Uh, to maybe... Uh, the swing arm, oh, if, right, okay. if that. 
Yeah. Uh, maybe the maybe the buckle actually. The carabiner. Fucking up. Cool man. Cool. I'm, I'm I love the looking wing. It looks wrong, mate. I'm definitely <laughs> feeling the um, the bumps more on it, but then I it's um, a much smaller wing than my roadster. Yeah, um, it's designed to be a paraglider rather than a yes. rather than a paramedic. So you'll yeah, see them, but it won't be horrible yeah yeah me and Paul have noticed nice that place, but well. it's beautiful mate it's, it's bloody quick as well isn't it it's nice and fast yeah well it's it's, it's um that's the main concern of people because it hasn't got trimmers they're like oh well it'll be really fucking slow but like Clive did a, a hundred and something mile cross-country flight with the guy and he kept up with us the whole fucking way so all right dude I'll, uh, I'll catch you later yeah I'll see you again in a bit bye for now mate right. cheers mate So um, the V-King, uh, in, in my current configuration, is burning a lot more fuel than I'm used to. Uh, and me and Paul went quite a way down, downwind. Uh, basically the wind picked up and uh, it's been a bit of a skirmish to work out whether we we're going to um, have fuel to get back to Membry. As you can see now, I'm approaching the field. I've got uh, my most recent fuel check just a second ago showed that I had two litres of fuel uh, on board. Um, now that I've gotten over this uh, particular ridge, I've got a lot more forward speed, which is nice. Before, I was effectively parked. But we've been using all the tools to our disposal. We had Google Maps up, trying to work out um, linearly how far along we were. So we worked out that um, we'd done three quarters of the mile, uh, three quarters of the route, and used about half our fuel. So not a brilliant um, kind of margin for error, but a good, uh, good kind of indicator. The last uh, couple of miles, me and Paul have been chatting and just trying to work out whether we've got enough fuel to make it back to the field, working out whether we're going to have to uh, land out somewhere. Um, but we're now approaching the field, as you can see. Um, I've been judging my fuel over the last kind of half an hour, uh, and I'm comfortable that I've got enough fuel to make it back to the field uh, and have at least a few landing attempts, which is nice. But yeah. Oh, it's a definite lesson uh, that I'm burning more fuel on the Viking uh, and that the, uh, the wind has obviously picked up today so um, again probably should have headed uh, kind of upwind uh, and then we'd have had a nice fast leg back and not had to worry so much about the fuel. The reason we didn't do that was obviously to avoid, uh, avoid a helicopter that was um, doing some exercises over the uh, kind of south side of the M4. I'm going to fly, I'm at the height of memory mass, I'm going to cross over the motorway 500 foot and then I'm going to fly down a, down the runway so at least I've got a few options and I'll be into wind as well. If I do have yeah. to make an early landing I can just pop it on the grass on the runway. The only thing I've got to be slightly wary of is um, I've got a feeling that the planes are coming down this direction at the moment. So uh, I've just got to make sure I stay high above the runway until the last kind of minute. Right mate, I can officially make the field uh, if I had an engine out now, if I run out of fuel. You would make the field, yeah? I would make the field, eh firm. Happy days mate, fucking lot of lesson learned for it. I'm looking forward to warming up my hands mate, I might need one of your girly hand warmers. Is your car no, not? No, you said it, you said it back early, <laughs> you're not having one mate. You I can know. You warm my hands up with it. I did take the piss but my hands have turned into uh into blocks of ice oh. <sighs> cool yeah i've got enough fuel to do a go around no dramas mate i'm just gonna do some stuff for the gopro that quick we took a bit of a cross-country leg and flew downwind uh, just because up in most you had military aviation doing maneuvers and exercise and we just don't want to get in the way of them but we have been sort of panicking whether we'd get back or not on the fuel that we've carried and I think Ben is quite relieved now that he's going to make a good landing at Hey, he landed on my feet! With a litre of fuel left. Yeah, so I, uh, I came down, mate. As soon as I got close to the ground, my um, sink rate shallowed off a bit. Yeah. Uh, 
and the, the flare is interesting so the brake pressure on those D rises is actually uh, heavier than I thought it would be uh, so yeah. it's quite a positive flare uh, yeah. but it was a, uh, a landing on my feet not too bad at all I, I'll take that yeah, the yeah, wind... did, did you have a lot of control over the flare yeah I did yeah so the wind is approximately six mile an hour, six to eight mile an hour at the moment on the ground. Aye, uh, um, and have you got accurate wind stop readings from both? Because these sort of point different ways, don't these two of them? Yeah, I mean, I came in um, approximately parallel to the runway, and that wasn't too bad at all. Um, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, mate. Well, I can let go of the wing, and... Mate, that is ridiculous. Look at it. Oh. <laughs> Carl, mate, that is a game changer, isn't it? Look at it. Do you want to know how easy the Dudek V-King is to launch? I've got the two hooking points in my hand. Camera in the other. I'm just going to walk back. It's above my head. Not even looking at it. <laughs> this thing is a game changer. Viking. Woo! Okay, so mission is get the wing. It's currently all crapped up. Just pull the, uh, the um, hooking points. Hand it to a mate who's then gonna do a somersault. I did a somersault thing? You'll find out. Run back, one hand. Give it to the friend. He takes it. There we go. 